So the Senate Banking Committee is holding a hearing tomorrow on the recent bank failures that have riled the market. Testimony from Michael Barr, the Fed Vice Chair for Supervision, released just a couple of minutes ago. Um, Michael Barr saying that the US banking system is sound and resilient. Kelly Lyons covers regulation for us in DC. Sound and resilient, Kelly. How does he keep the system working along those kinds of lines? Well, he said that some changes are likely going to be needed. Toward the tail end of his planned remarks, he says that the failure of SBV illustrates the need to move forward with the work of improving resilience in the banking system. And he says recent events have shown we must evolve our understanding of banking in light of changes in technology and emerging risk. And they are considering the implications for how we should be regulating and supervising financial institutions. What is really interesting to me, though, is he goes in this testimony to the rollback of those Dodd-Frank era rules we saw several years ago in the Trump administration administration for banks, uh, mid-sized banks, and he says they're looking in this review, evaluating whether the application of more stringent standards would have prompted the bank, SVB being the bank, to better manage the risks that led to its failure and assessing whether SVB would have had higher levels of capital and liquidity under those standards. This is going to be a subject of much contention in the hearing tomorrow, guys, I would guess, especially as you have senators like the Democrat, Elizabeth Warren, who mm -hmm. was on the committee, putting forward legislation to roll back the rollback of the Rules have, those rules have really pointed a finger at that rollback as being to blame for the collapse of not just SVB, but Signature as well. That is an idea that Republicans have pushed against, and I would mm -hmm. bet we're going to get a lot of a grandstanding and back and forth on that uh, subject. Shocking that we would have partisan talk uh, in a hearing. But <laughs> I, I, if I try and like find a narrow path here and just kind of get rid of the partisan stuff that we're going to get tomorrow, um, what, what other things are going to be hot-button issues that actually could see some progress? Well, the FDIC cap is one that looks likely because you actually have had lawmakers on both sides of the aisle talking about that possibility. Granted, there is no real consensus on what that cap, which currently sits at $250,000, could be raised to in theory, but there does not seem to be much universal support behind just a lifting of it uh, entirely, even for a temporary period of time. That's something that the House Freedom Caucus, uh, far-right members uh, in the House on the Republican side have pushed back against. So there could be some support for raising the cap. I would guess that the FDIC chair, Marty Grunberg, who is also testifying tomorrow, is going to get some questions around what he thinks that maybe should look like. But that is one idea that seems like it has at least a certain degree of support on Capitol Hill. That isn't to say, though, that anything will automatically sail through because it still is a divided Congress. What does Congress want U.S. banks to be, Kaylee? Is there a kind of... Is there a sense of, of the utility that they serve? And if so, what's the best way of going about achieving that? Well, they definitely... Uh, over the course of the last several weeks, has, there has been a lot of emphasis placed on how important it is to have banks of all shapes and sizes, to have these smaller community lenders and the mid-sized banks in addition to the banks that are deemed too big to fail. So they do want to have a banking system in which all of those things can coexist, which is why there is conversation around how best to support some of those smaller lenders that have seen uh, deposits fleeing. There's also the question of the fact that this is the era of mobile banking, and how do they need to look mm -hmm. at the banking system differently in light of it? Because that is really what contributed to the speed of these failures we have seen.